Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you nine things that you should probably think about before you get going with Power BI, or really anything. Let's go. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, you're just getting started with Power BI. You're not really sure what to do, where to go, who, what, when, how. What I wanna do is share with you a couple of things that I think about or that I wish I had really thought about more when I started my journey. Hopefully this will help you out. All right, the first thing I wanna share is passion. Having a passion about what you do really helps you in terms of sticking with it over time, right? So it's not just a fad. It's not something you're just going to give up down the road. If you're passionate about data, if you're passionate about reporting, if you're passionate about exploring items to get solutions to problems, that's going to really help you in terms of learning the product as well as continuing to just keep going with Power BI. And I mentioned in the intro that this is also relevant to things outside of Power BI, even with this YouTube thing that we do on Guy in a Cube, passion has been a huge driving factor. I have two huge passions outside of my family, that is Power BI and that is video production. Bring those together, you've got Guy in a Cube. That has helped us keep this going. All right, so you got all this passion and you want this to be done right now. I wanna crank out those amazing reports within 30 minutes. Well you need to have patience. Patience is going to help you along this journey. Rome wasn't built in a day, and this is going to take a while to build up those skills and to be an expert in your craft. And that's true of anything, right? The more you do it, the better you become, and as you get more of those examples and that experience, you're just gonna be that much better for it. But you're gonna to have to have patience to get you through that long haul. One thing that helps when I think about where I'm at in my journey is try not to compare yourself to someone who's further along in their journey than you are. So compare yourself to someone that's, if you're just starting out, compare yourself to someone else that's just starting out. and see if you can kind of pace yourself with them or make that comparison. Making your comparison with someone who's been working in the field and working with Power BI for about five years or so is not a fair comparison and it's probably gonna be a little negative in your thought process as well. So have patience, figure out where you are in your journey, compare yourself with where people were at that point in their journey, so it's apples to apples comparison, and then move forward. All right, there are a ton of tutorials and trainings and all of that stuff available for you, but the one thing that you shouldn't do is get stuck in those tutorials, right? So they're great for just kind of learning things and getting up to speed quickly, but the one thing you should absolutely do is start doing the work, right? So start building a report, start working on a project that will help you get those skills. The minute you start working on those items, you're gonna figure out and learn a lot more about the product through trial and error as you actually work with real world scenarios. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's gonna suck at first. Everything does. And as you do it more, it will get better. And as you see more examples and you start integrating that into your projects, it's gonna become awesome. So don't be afraid to put those tutorials to the side and start actually working and creating something. I go back to a blog post that my friend wrote, Matthew Roach, looking at Legos and building blocks and things of that nature. And Power BI is just like that. It's like Legos and building on that foundation of what you've got. It's important to know the base and then you can build on top of those items. Understanding data modeling, understanding DAX, understanding visualization concepts and when to apply the right visuals and when not, those are super important. Reading things outside of the Power BI sphere, so just visualization in general or just data modeling modeling concepts and data concepts in general, those can all help you to hone your skill and to make you a better report person. So make sure you are having that solid base in your understanding and your learnings as you work with Power BI. Data modeling is such a crucial piece and I think it's probably one of the more often overlooked pieces of Power BI because everyone just wants to get to the visuals and then when they get to the visuals, stuff is slow, it's not working right, I'm getting wrong numbers and it's all because that data model was overlooked. 
90% of your time is gonna be with that data. So make sure you understand how that works and how you can do it inside of Power BI for the most performant outcome. I've been saying this over the years, I was in support for 10 years and now, well, if you're watching this in the future, as of the recording of this video, we were in this thing called coronavirus where everyone was on lockdown, my kids were out of school for like, or homeschooling for like half a year and the kids would come up to us and ask questions and so my response, my native response when I was in support and now with my kids is, what did you search on? Because if it's something new and I don't know, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go search. Like if someone asks me a question and I don't know it, I want to go see if it's out there. So don't be afraid to search first. And the act and art of searching is just that. It's an art. Do more of it and you will figure out what terms can get you to the information that you need. But also try to build that muscle or the uh, the ability to discern information that may not be directly related. I don't know how many times I've read a blog post where, okay, it's got some of the error messaging that is related to my problem. It's not exactly on my problem, but reading this, it helps me make that connection and jump in a different direction or try something new, right? Just from searching and looking at results. So it may not be the exact thing you're looking at, but you may still be able to gain knowledge from items that come as a result. And if it's not working for you, change up your keywords, figure out what you're searching on, search for the actual error message. You'd be surprised how many times the answer comes up. The other thing I would add to that is like, I don't, there are things in DAX that either I don't know or I have not committed to memory because I can just look them up and I can search. So I can search DAX space, whatever it is I'm looking for month over month. And I can quickly get to something that will give me that pointer and move me along my way. So I don't have to commit everything to memory. My brain is not like an imported cache model in Power BI. Not everything's up here. Sometimes I got a direct query. Moving the train along, uh, try to find either a group of folks or someone that you can bounce things off of. Some folks refer to this as a mentor. Other folks refer to this as just a learning group or a mastermind of some kind. Having this available for you to bounce off ideas is something that can be very helpful and make you not just so siloed on your own, right? And you know, maybe you have tunnel vision and you're only working on something else, but bouncing it off of someone else can really help you. So one of the things I love about working with Patrick is he and I are, we're very like-minded, but I mean, we'll sit there and we'll talk about a problem and just bounce it off of each other. And one of us may have been going down this one direction, but by talking to the other person, uh, it opened our mind a little bit and now we can maybe navigate it a different way. So it's incredibly powerful. You may also be thinking like, well, how do I even get involved in something like that? Check out your local user groups. That's a great way to start and to meet people that are in a similar situation, develop those relationships, and then you can start building off of each other and empowering each other to build your skills on Power BI. Check out your local user groups. If you're not sure, I'll have a link down below for the Power BI user groups website that you can go check out and um, start interacting and working with folks. All right, so you started doing all these things that I've been talking about and you're just, you know, kind of, you're doing the grind, but you're frustrated that it's taking so long or it's really hard. The one thing I can say is it does get easier. As you do this more, as you build those muscles, as you work those skills, it will get easier over time. Over time, you'll know better what to search for. You'll have those people that you can work out to or that are, or that are reaching out to you. You'll have a ton of projects under your belt that you can refer back to and even, you know, you know, two, three years down the road, go back, look at that very first one you did and just shudder and be like, oh my gosh, it was so bad. I've done that with blogging. Patrick and I do that with our videos. It's, it's amazing how far you will go over time, but it does get easier and you'll figure out things and you'll know where to go. You won't spend so much time in this one area anymore because you're so familiar with it. And this goes back to those fundamentals. Once you've learned those items, those base items, data modeling and all that, it becomes so much easier and you don't have to spend all your time in that space anymore, right? Because you're you're very familiar with it and so you get to do things faster than what you did when you first started out. So just hang in there, play the long game, it will get easier for you. And I mentioned before, don't stay in your silos. So the eighth thing I'm gonna call out is get involved in social media. 
you'd be amazed of how many people are out there, especially in this coronavirus world where we're all on lockdown, is to just engage with people online. It's very easy to do. Twitter is a huge community that I partake in. The Reddit community, as of the recording of this video, just recently crossed 20,000 members there. There's a huge Facebook group out there as well with a lot of people. So these are folks that you can bounce ideas off of. You can ask questions. You can search through those items because there's a lot of items out there. But I, I know like a lot of the MVPs, a lot of the product team, and other community members, they're active on Twitter. So there's a lot of resources out there for you to connect with other like-minded people, even though you may not be able to do that face-to-face -face interaction. And I'll have links down below in the description to some of those items I called out to help you start getting involved in there. The last thing I'll throw out there, and I'm gonna challenge you a little bit, is try to give a presentation on something. I know that can be incredibly scary for some folks, even for myself sometimes when I'm presenting on a new item. I get a little cold feet, right? You know, we get a little nervous about something that's new and, and challenging and pushes you. But presenting something, I know Patrick and I have said this so many times when we're building out the demos and we're working on something for a presentation, it really pushes us to learn the product in different areas that we wouldn't have otherwise looked at. And or to refresh your knowledge on something that changes so fast inside of the Power BI and Power Platform world or just technology in general, right? So this could be presenting at your local user group once everything lightens up or just presenting on, you know, there's a bunch of places that have gone online now. So you could present on those. You could present in your, maybe a local group, do a start a local group inside of your organization. If there's a bunch of people doing Power BI, present to that locally or even start up a YouTube channel and start pumping out videos and present that to the world. Just know that'll suck in the beginning too. Remember, practice, practice, practice. The more you do it, better it'll get. And that's true with presenting too. The first time you're gonna present, it's not gonna be great, but you're trying and you're doing it and you're pushing yourself. And the more you do it, the better of a presenter you'll become and the more you'll learn about the product. And you'll also make connections and build relationships along the way. So it's just a win-win all around. I definitely challenge you to do that. Again, I'll have a link down below of how you could get connected with your local user group. It's a great place to start. All right, those are the items that I wanted to highlight in terms of what you should know before getting started with Power BI, but I would love your thoughts as well. I'm sure you've got many more. Leave them down below, you know where, in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video. Hey friends, run over to YouTube to see the full video of my thoughts on what you should know before getting started with Power BI. And a little bit of a challenge at the end.